We're now going to talk about recognition site glycoproteins. Those are listed right here, page B23. These are located on the outer surface of the cell membrane. If we return back to page B20, on the bottom of page B20, uh, we can see our picture of the cell membrane. And projecting out on the outer surface of the cell membrane, uh, every cell in a particular person's body has a unique set of so-called glycoprotein recognition sites. Again, these are projecting out on the outer surface of the cell membrane. These are called glycoproteins because the proteins embedded in the cell membrane have sugars or carbohydrates attached to them. Glyco, as in the word glucose, refers to these sugars. Every person genetically produces a unique set or combination of glycoprotein recognition sites that appear on the outer surface of the cells of their body. There are no two people that have the exact same combination of glycoprotein recognition sites unless they have an identical twin. In this respect, I like to think of it almost like a unique license plate that appears on the outer surface of every cell in your body. If we return back to page B23, what is the purpose of this unique set of markers uh, on the outer surface of the body? We wrote that uh, these recognition sites are called recognition sites because they allow our white blood cells, our immune system, to recognize which cells belong to us and which cells are foreign cells that have entered our body and do not belong in our body. These recognition sites actually go by a number of names. Uh, they are referred to as recognition sites. They are also known as major histocompatibility complex or MHC glycoproteins. The meaning behind histocompatibility is that that indicates which cells are compatible to the body and which cells would not. They're also known as cell identity markers because they are used by the white blood cells to uniquely identify which cells belong to you and which don't. Now, all the cells we said in your body have a unique uh, set of glycoprotein markers. These are actually known as MHC class one uh, recognition sites. The only exception to what we've said is there are three types of cells that do not have the regular identification markers that all the other cells of our body possess. The three cells are B lymphocytes and macrophages. The B lymphocytes are the lymphocyte white blood cells that produce antibodies uh, against uh, foreign agents. Uh, and macrophages, the large phagocytic cells that swallow up uh, foreign agents, they have uh, different identity markers on their outer surface that are actually known as MHC class II glycoprotein recognition sites or identity markers. And the third type of cell in our body that doesn't have the usual markers are red blood cells. Red blood cells have a unique set of uh, glycoprotein markers that are related to blood typing. So if you've heard of blood type A, blood type B, uh, and so on, those are the uh, uh, names of the identity markers that are on the outer surface of red blood cells. Other than these three types of cells in our body, all the other cells of our body have what are called MHC class one glycoprotein recognition sites. So this really is the explanation as to how your white blood cells are able to differentiate or recognize which cells are yours and if a bacterial cell enters your body, the white blood cells recognize that it's lacking the correct identity marker, it doesn't have the correct license plate on its outer surface, and the white blood cells proceed to destroy those foreign cells. This is also the explanation of the challenge of organ transplants. If somebody needs a kidney transplant or a heart transplant, so before they can even attempt to transplant uh, a, a, a heart from somebody else, a kidney from somebody else into another person, they are looking for a close match. And by that we mean that the recognition sites that, that appear on the outer surface of the cells of this uh, other kidney are similar enough 
to the glycoprotein recognition sites on the cells of the recipient's body. It would be like whatever license plate you have on your car, whatever combination of letters and numbers, to be seeking a license plate that has as similar a pattern as possible of those same combination of letters and numbers. That would be a close license plate match. If they can find a close match, they will try transplanting that uh, a foreign organ. Even then, uh, the white blood cells cannot be fooled, uh, and they will still usually start to attack uh, the cells that make up that transplanted organ. In order to reduce this immune response against the cells of the transplanted organ, people who receive organ transplants are usually required to take drugs called immunosuppressant drugs. The word suppress means to inhibit. These are drugs that inhibit the immune response, and they commonly do that by lowering the white blood cell count. Some of the most common of the immunosuppressant drugs are corticosteroids, such as prednisone. I'm not asking you to remember the name prednisone, but I am asking you to remember the class of drugs that prednisone belongs to called corticosteroids that are commonly used to suppress the immune system and slow down the white blood cells from attacking uh, these uh, cells of the transplanted organ. When they do, that's called organ transplant rejection. Now, of course, the uh, natural consequence of taking drugs that uh, suppress the immune response is that it makes the person taking these drugs more susceptible, more vulnerable to becoming uh, sick by infectious diseases, by bacterial or viral infections, because they lack the normal immune response. They are immunocompromised. Glycoprotein recognition sites also are part of the explanation of what are known as autoimmune diseases. There are hundreds of autoimmune diseases. The root auto means self. This is literally where the immune system, the white blood cells, attack the person's own body. There are a number of theories as to uh, what's going on with autoimmune diseases. First off, we know that there is genetic predisposition to develop an autoimmune disease. It, the, they can run in families. In individuals who have a genetic predisposition to develop an autoimmune disease where their immune system attacks their own body, it is commonly, not always, but commonly triggered or initiated by an infection. <clears throat> there are a number of theories as to how the infection uh, triggers or initiates the immune system to attack the cells of the person's own body. So we've written here that infections, uh, in many cases, are what trigger or initiate an autoimmune attack on the body in those individuals with a genetic predisposition. While there are a number of uh, mechanisms that have been proposed, I just want to mention two. So an example of what may be the case is that a strep throat, a streptococcal infection, streptococcus pyogenes uh, infection, in an individual with a genetic predisposition may trigger an autoimmune attack on their heart. And that's known as rheumatic heart disease. Now, it appears that when, the, uh, when somebody gets a strep throat, now for most of us, if we get a strep throat, your white blood cells, your immune system just attacks, attacks the bacteria uh, in your throat. But in individuals with a genetic predisposition, at the same time that the white blood cells, your immune system, starts to attack the bacteria, which is great, it simultaneously starts to attack the endocardium, the inner lining of the heart. It appears that there is a, a chemical similarity between uh, the cells of the heart and uh, chemicals associated with the strep throat so that there is a cross-reaction. The immune system, the white blood cells, can't differentiate or tell the difference between the real bad guys, which is the bacterial infection, and the person's heart. So every time they get a strep throat, their immune system simultaneously also attacks uh, their heart. That's known as rheumatic heart disease. A second type of mechanism, similar to the first, 
is where somebody has a cytomegalovirus infection. Uh, this is a viral infection. And in somebody with a genetic predisposition, when this CMV virus enters their beta cells of the pancreatic islets, uh, when those cells become infected with the virus, it causes changes in the recognition sites that appear on the outer surface of these virally infected cells. And therefore, those cells no longer have the correct recognition site identity markers, and the white blood cells, the immune system, proceed to attack and destroy those viral infected uh, beta pancreatic cells in the pancreas, leading to juvenile onset or type 1 diabetes. So in this case, a viral infection again acts as a trigger initiating the autoimmune attack on uh, certain cells of the person's body. So these infections do seem to be what triggers or initiates the onset. There are many autoimmune diseases besides uh, the rheumatic heart disease and juvenile onset diabetes. There is uh, rheumatoid arthritis, glomerulonephritis, uh, uh, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, and multiple sclerosis, or MS. Many of these we will be speaking more of uh, later on in this course. One of the possible drug treatments that could be used to slow down the immune system from attacking the person's own uh, cells of their own body would be, again, for the uh, person with this autoimmune disease uh, to take immunosuppressant drugs like corticosteroids. Again, taking these drugs lowers the white blood cell count, uh, uh, suppresses or inhibits the immune response, slowing down the immune attack on uh, the person's own body. But again, the adverse consequence of that is that makes the person more vulnerable or susceptible to uh, viral and bacterial infections.